A quick note before we get into today's meditation, I mean drawing advice, I just launched a Patreon. There's a variety of perks, but the big one is early access to these videos. If you were to join today, the day this video aired, you would get immediate access to six drawing companions. You'd have to wait a couple months to see those otherwise. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description. I'll discuss a little more about it at the end of the video, but whether you support me directly or not, let me thank everyone here for their support in all of its forms. Watching, commenting, sharing, engaging. You all inspire me to stick with what I believe are these foundational points about creativity and exploring the strange in art. Thank you. Now on to today's topic, how you can improve your drawing even when you're not putting pencil to paper. Drawing as a practice isn't just what you put down. I mean, some half of it is also the lens through which you view the real world. You can improve at drawing when you're not drawing by being mindful of this lens, this filter that you put over reality and developing it, consciously changing it and adding considerations and aspects to it. To artists who say, no, I don't look at life. It's all just me. Or I don't draw from life. I just copy other artists and do my own stuff. Yeah, sure. Even if you really don't look at life, that's not what I'm talking about. Other people's art and your own still occur to you as visual and mental phenomena within your sphere of experience. And so they also go through your lens, your filter. You are focusing on or missing out on whole aspects of the art of others based on your lens and you're missing out on whole aspects of your own art based on your lens. Paying attention to this lens when you're out in the world as you're going about is one of the fastest ways to gain insight into drawing principles and what makes stuff look like what it is, which is a foundational understanding for someone trying to grapple with drawing. It can be difficult at first because you're not quite sure what you're developing but it does get easier as time goes on and insights start to build on each other and come quicker and quicker. So I'm going to get unusually practical early in this video and try to explain exactly how to do it, what I'm talking about, how to look at the lens through which you view the world. All right, so it's pretty simple. It's just that we don't do it a lot, or I feel like a lot of people don't do it a lot. As you're out in the world, you know, at the bank, on a hike, whatever, as your friend is chewing you out for something stupid you did, occasionally, suddenly, become intensely aware of the character of the complete visual impression hitting your eyes. Just snap right into it. Don't look at anything in particular. Just look at everything. Let your focus get soft. Just take everything in all at once. If you're not sure if you're doing it, try to notice a moment where you're focusing on one thing, someone's eye, a leaf on the ground, any moment where there is no individual thing intensely noticed means that you are looking at everything. If that doesn't work for you, another thing you can try is putting your attention very briefly on your peripheral vision. Since there's no way to actually focus on your peripheral vision, I find that this kind of snaps me in to a generalized view of the whole field. You can just sort of take in what is occurring at the top, bottom, and left and right edges of the disc of your vision. Just notice it very softly there's nothing hard to do there. You can't actually look at those things with any sharp detail. Just use it as a way to soften your view. If you've never done this before, well, congrats. You just discovered a basic skill and you have realized this for the first time. You've realized that you can step back and view the individual little camera, the individual little lens that you look out at the world from, even if it's only for a moment at a time. So this becomes a very useful way to analyze the world around you. Just notice everything about the visual field. Keep your focus light and soft. 
ask yourself, like, what is available for you to notice about the whole scene in front of you? This tableau of light, shadow, color, form, shouting friends, prancing dogs, disappointed wives. Can you notice the way light loses its intensity as it travels from its source? If you're looking at the whole scene, instead of moving your eye from the light source to the shadow that it disappears into, if you look at both things at once, if you're looking at everything, can you really see the fall off itself as an experience? Can you notice the way the colors change as they move across a wall? Can you notice what edges are crisp in the visual field and what edges are soft? If you're looking at people, can you notice their body language? Now let's go a little deeper. If you're looking at those same people, can you notice the empty space between the people? Can you notice the empty space between everything? What is the character of this negative space? Next time you're at the museum looking at a, a favorite sculpture, execute this little move that you've learned. How many times have you seen this favorite piece of art and only been looking at your idea of it? What is it actually? What does it actually look like? What is the context within which you experience it? How far is it from the walls? What, it's, what is its relationship to the light that illuminates it? How do the jostling heads of the people around you affect your impression of it? How does it bounce light back into the face of a loved one? What it actually looks like is a complete experience in relationship with everything around it. It's not just the thing. It is the thing and everything around it and the way that they define each other. This stepped back view is wide open and over the years can contain everything that you know about art. When you move into it, it can take a snapshot for you of everything you are capable of understanding about this scene. All the light interactions, the color interactions, the value falloffs, the gestures, the character of the negative and positive space, the nature of the shapes in the scene, the possibilities are endless. And they are limited only by the things you have realized you can analyze about the world and art. You can put abstract filters over this space. You can ask yourself, how would one of my favorite artists paint this scene? What about this scene would not read well in a painting? What does this scene look like from far above my head? All of that stuff can be understood while taking in the whole scene at once as a complete impression. There are other mysteries here as well, as if all of that wasn't enough. Your body dangles at the bottom of this lens. It's always present as the central column of the roiling kaleidoscope of experience. And perched on top of that, somewhere over the blurry crest of your chest is well, this is an art channel, so I'll let you draw your own conclusion about that. Thanks for drawing today. Okay, a little addendum here. So I've launched a Patreon. Yeah, I just wanted to take a second to completely prostrate myself before you and be genuine. I just want to let you know that I am truly asking for your support. I've been putting out these videos for about a year and a half, and what I've discovered in that time is that I love doing them. It feels so right to be talking about these topics, which I don't feel get covered enough, 
and the emails, comments, and messages that I get from you all have quickly become the most gratifying fruits of my practice, which is crazy. I've even developed real friendships through it, which is completely unexpected. The most amazing thing for me, the thing that really kind of haunts me, is how much more I care about messages from you all saying I helped you calm down a bit while you draw. Then I care about backpats from clients on projects, you know, e even big projects. I never show my wife those congratulation emails from work at the end of a big push, but I show her damn near every message where someone is saying that they found room to enjoy drawing where it was hard to find before. And that's really what this is about. To be completely transparent with you, I make all of my money working for clients making concept and production art. It often comes in crushing waves that tank my schedule for months at a time, and I have to make the videos in tight pockets of focused activity and then release them slowly. I know I love making these videos and being in touch with you all, but damn, I had to take a week off from work to make the current crop of videos. I think it's pretty obvious that that's not sustainable, so I think Patreon is the way. I'm not going to push this channel into clickbaity, what works territory, that's not me. I'm going to stick to what I believe is the truth and where I can help the most. Having your direct support would make it mentally much less stressful on myself and my dog and my wife to take time off here and there to make the videos and expand into new things I want to explore on the channel, which are many. So check out the Patreon, see if it's something you're interested in. You'll get access to the videos as soon as I have them done. You get high res scans of my pencil drawings for personal use, exclusive high res progress shots and lens posts of drawings I'm currently developing, discounts on future digital tutorial videos, and there's a little Discord in case you want to get out of the comments and talk to each other about all this drawing weirdness. Thanks for listening, take care, and keep drawing.